In this morning's Health Watch, boating safety. Summer is obviously the time for boaters, and this weekend is like LA traffic at five o'clock on the 4th of July weekend. CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg is here with some potentially life-saving information, Peter. Good morning, Armin. I recently took a ride with the U.S. Coast Guard as part of Operation Dry Water. The idea is to strongly remind boaters that while drinking alcohol on the water isn't illegal, driving a boat while intoxicated surely is. It's a sunny afternoon on Jones Beach in Long Island, New York, and boaters are out in full force. Coast Guard Station, Jones Beach, this is 25720. So is the Coast Guard. As part of Operation Drywater, federal, state, and local maritime agencies are patrolling areas across the U.S. looking for drunk boaters and trying to keep the water safe. Coast Guard's raising more awareness, educating, uh, making sure that people understand that just like driving a car, when you're under influence of alcohol or drugs, uh, it can in impact a lot of lives when they're on the water. I mean, operating a boat, if you're not careful, that's a lethal weapon. Correct. Last year alone, there were 672 deaths from boating accidents, and alcohol is the number one contributing factor. When we pull someone, we're, we're especially looking at the operator, how he's behaving, on, how he's here. operating that vessel. And then if we observe signs such as erratic behavior, then we go through a, a variety of field sobriety tests. Just like driving a car, the blood alcohol content of a boat driver can't exceed 0 .08. And while alcohol is a big part of the problem, it's not the only problem. In an overwhelming majority of cases where people drowned in boating accidents, they weren't wearing their life preservers. Bring more to the, law. the law requires boats to have a preserver for every passenger on board, but it doesn't require them to wear one. That's a lot of people That's for That's a lot boat. of people for that size boat, so we just want to make sure everyone has life jackets. There were 11 people on board this boat, but only seven life vests a risky ratio that could turn deadly when you consider how easy it is to fall off a boat and how difficult it is to stop one. There's no brakes on, on, on boats. Uh, you bring back the throttles and depending on the size of the boat is, is when you're going to stop. The biggest problem we have here is that you can buy a boat, 40-foot boat, without any type of formal training, any type of licensing. Joseph Mutino, a recreational boater, has been navigating these waters for the past 30 years. I think everybody's required at some level to become a boater, some type of licensing, whether it's a classroom session or even a Coast Guard trained you know, session where they tell you how to operate a boat. Andrew Costa agrees. This is what I do. <laughs> I've, you know, I grew up boating on Long Island. Boating should be fun, but also safe. Generally, when we come out, we load up the boat with, uh, you know, a lot of uh, food and supplies and come out for the day, spend the day at the beach. While those supplies often include alcohol, Andrew, the captain of his family's ship, makes it clear he always has a designated driver on board and follows a safety checklist. Boating safety is very important. Make sure you have up-to-date flares, working lights, up-to-date fire extinguishers. All the safety equipment is very important. You know, you always gotta, you always gotta, uh, you know, be careful out here. It's no joke. Peter, a really informative piece, including the fact Alabama is the only state that requires a boating license. What is up with that? The only state that actually requires anybody who wants to drive a boat to actually obtain a license. Other states want you to take an education course, but the enforcement is not big. Andrew Costa said something, it just really struck me, it's no joke, and I wrote down, people take the day on the water too lightly until it's too late. You really need to take a basic seamanship course. You can conduct with the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. Even some of the, the boating retailers like West Marine, they'll get you to, into one of these. You really you go down and you buy a boat, you turn the engine on, you're going to get in trouble if you don't know what you're doing. You talked about the, the excessive alcohol and the lack of life vests and things like that. What other safety tips? Well, the bottom line is you need to wear life preservers. In 88% of the cases where people drowned in boating accidents, none of them were wearing a life preserver. Peter, thank you again. Great report.